Hola. Hello. You are not positioned correctly. So I'm trying to get you right. That looks better. I think that's better. It looks better. Yay. I'm coming in and out. It is Wednesday night. Wednesday night at, oh, I don't know what time it is, 11.30 Wednesday night. And I am here. Yes, I am. Remember that time when I was going to start doing these earlier? And then I was going to shift to morning? Yeah, none of that ever happened. But we're still fighting for it. We will get there one day. Um, this is good, though, because we are here. Instead of not here, which is which is good. We are going to do Psalm. Let's see, I think we are. I gotta figure out where to stop. 75, right? Through 77. 75 through 77 is what we're doing. I'll give it a few more seconds before we get started. And my light is crazy tonight. I got two different lights, so it makes me zoom in and out. Um, so I'm trying to get it balanced, so to stop the zooming, so you won't be dizzy. Look at who it is, all the way from Florida. It is Michelle. Hi, Michelle. Thanks for joining us, girl. All the way from the hot, hot Florida. Hopefully you're enjoying your vacation. Yes, yes, yes. Well, we are in Psalm 75. I'm going to give it a few more seconds and then we'll get started. Trying to shake myself. Whoa. All right. Psalm 75, and as you know, we are going through the Old Testament in a year. I cannot believe it is August. It is August 1st, guys. It is August 1st, August already. We are here. We are trucking along in this year. Seven months have passed. Seven months are gone. Seven months cannot be repeated. So, on to the next. On to the next. Hopefully, we'll have some good things coming out of the last few months of this year. Five months left to make something happen, guys. Five months left. Yes. All right. We will start with Psalm 75. And, of course, we're reading Psalms. Uh, we know that we have started uh, Book 3 of Psalms or Division 3 of Psalms, which goes from Psalm 73 to Psalm 89. Um. And we are in the section of, I think, the first 11 or so um, songs um, were written by Asaph. And Asaph, I'm not so sure I said this yesterday, but Asaph is um, one of David's musicians, sort of director, musician, slash singer. Uh, we probably, hey Kiki, we probably would think of him as a praise leader. Um, so he would be the person that's directing leading the praise as well as directing others how to praise. Um, and so um, uh, he is the writer of the Psalms that we are reading now. He is also known to be prophetic. Um, and some of his Psalms are even prophetic. And so that is who we're reading, Asaph. That's who Asaph is. Um, and Psalm 75 starts off with, we praise you, God. We praise you for your name is near. People tell of your wonderful deeds. You say, I choose the appointed time. It is I who judge with equity. When the earth and all its people quake, it is I who holds its pillars firm. Um, to the arrogant, I say, boast no more. And to the wicked, do not lift up your horns. Do not lift your horns against heaven. 
do not speak so defiantly. And so it's opening up as a praise, right? Um, praising God um, just for who he is and for his name being so awesome. Um, but then it talks about those who aren't praising him, right? Um, those who are ignoring him and the earth, right? And all the people in it that are so arrogant um, that they're boasting of themselves and not boasting of God. Um, and uh, the psalmist, Asaph, is instructing them by song not to do that, right? He's basically telling them, you don't want to go against heaven. You don't want to lift up your voice against heaven, right? Verse um, 7 says, it is God who judges. Let me move this over. It is God who judges. He, he brings one down. He exalts the other. Um, in the hand of the Lord is a cup full of foaming wine mixed with spices. He pours it out and all the wicked of the earth drink it down to its very dregs. Verse 9 says, as for me, I will declare this forever. I will sing praise to the God of Jacob. And so he's talking about all of these things that's happening to the wicked and how they're exalting themselves and they need to realize that it is not God, um, um, it is not themselves that need to be exalted, but God will do the exalting. Um, but then he, he, he wants it to be a clear definition between who he's talking about and who he is, right? And so he says, as for me, in other words, that's not me. As for me, I don't do those things. As for me, I'm not holding arrogance in my heart, God. As for me, you don't have to worry about me. As for me, I will declare this forever. I will sing praise to the God of Jacob. And so uh, Asaph is sitting, setting himself um, uh, in a, a difference between those who don't praise God, right? That's basically saying, God, don't lump me in the same category with them. I am not them. Hi, Tanya. Don't lump me in the same category as they are. I am not them. And then uh, verse 10 says, who says, I will cut the horns of of all the wicked, but the horns of the righteous will be lifted up. And so um, um, here uh, God is saying that he's going to take care of the wicked um, and the righteous won't have to be worried, right? The righteous will be lifted up um, and exalted and God's going to do that exalting. And when God exalts you, no man can bring you down. And that's the truth, right? Now, when you exalt yourself, or when you allow others to exalt you, you can come down crashing real fast. I don't know if you believed the hype that sometimes others put on you. Oh, you're so awesome. You can do this. It's great. You won the world. Ain't nothing going to happen to you. You got to go on it. And the next thing you know, you find yourself abased instead of abounding, right? Um, and then those friends that were lifting you up, they're nowhere to be found. That's usually what happens, right? And so we've got to make sure that we're not exalting ourselves. That we're not letting others exalt us, um, but that we are allowing our exaltation to come from the Lord. That was the end of Psalm 75. Um, Psalm 76. Psalm 76, also written by Asaph. Psalm 76. And in Psalm 76, um, the title also says, with stringed instruments, right? And so... It's indicating to us that he played this with a string instrument. Most people believe that it's the harp uh, because that was a popular instrument of the day. And so most people believe that if he played with a string instrument, that string instrument would be the harp. Um, this song sort of celebrates uh, victory on behalf of God's people. Um, we don't know exactly what victory they might be celebrating. There are some um, theories from other theologians over what specifically might be being celebrated here, but I don't think that's important and we can get lost in that um, and miss the importance of the psalm. The importance of the psalm is that there is a cause for celebration and when there is a cause for celebration, let's celebrate, right? Um, which I think is the most important thing. I think we as children of God, uh, we oftentimes are looking for the next thing, looking for the next thing, looking for the next thing. And we don't take time to enjoy the fact that God answered the last prayer, right? 
You get what I'm saying? We don't we don't take time to take a deep breath and thank him and praise him and say hallelujah, glory to God, because he answered the last prayer, right? Sometimes we can get so into the uh into the mode of what we're doing that we don't understand that we are being ungrateful, right? Um, God has answered our prayer. God has given us what we asked for. God has not given us what we asked for him not to give. God has done small things. God has done medium things. God has done big things. Um, sometimes we just need to pause from our everyday everything and just take a moment, a moment of silence and say, you know what, God? Thank you, Lord, for delivering me. Thank you for delivering my family. Thank you for keeping us safe. Thank you, oh God, for loving us. Thank you, oh God. Thank you, oh God. Thank you, oh God. Thank you, oh God. Um, that Thanksgiving is important. All right. Going on along, Psalm 76 opens up with, God is renowned in Judah. In Israel, his name is great. His tent is in Salem. His dwelling place in Zion. There he broke the flashing arrows, the shields, and the swords, the weapons of war. You are radiant with light, more majestic than mountains rich with game. The valiant he lie plundered, they sheep their last they sleep their last sleep. Not one of the warriors can lift his hands. At your rebuke, God of Jacob. Both horse and chariot lie still. It is you alone who are to be feared. Who can stand before you when you are angry, right? Who can stand before you when you are angry? Hi, Toya. Um, and I like that scripture. It is alone. It is you alone who are to be feared. Who can stand before you when you are angry? It reminds me of a couple of songs. Um, 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 that we talk about uh, who is like the Lord nobody who is like the Lord no 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 nobody remember that song um, if our God is for us right um, it reminds me of that song um, it also reminds uh, me of who can um, tell me who can stand be for us when we call on your great name, Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus, we have the victory. We know these um, uh, psalms, right? Um, and it brings uh, to mind, right? Who can stand before you when you are angry? From heaven you pronounced judgment, and the land feared and was quiet. When you, God, rose up to judge, to save all the afflicted of the land, surely your wrath against mankind brings you praise, and the survivors of your wrath are restrained. Make vows to the Lord your God and fulfill them. And I love the way he says, make vows to the Lord. And he didn't just stop there. He didn't just say, make vows to the Lord. He said, make vows to the Lord your God and fulfill them. Make vows to the Lord your God and fulfill them. In other words, don't just tell God what you're going to do. Don't just promise some empty promise. But with the vows that you make to God, make sure that you keep the vows that you make to God, right? Make vows and fulfill them. Let all the neighboring lands bring gifts to the one to be feared. Uh, he breaks the spirit of rulers. He is feared by the kings of the earth. Um, and again, that was Psalm 76, Psalm 76. And then finally, let's move on to Psalm 77. Psalm 77, it is a psalm written for the director of music for Jonathan of Asaph, a psalm, right? And um, I think I talked to you before that when it says for the director of music, I think uh, the King James says for the chief musician, that a lot of theologians think that that's God himself. And so they're saying this song is written for God. Um, but it's also a way to delineate what songs they wanted uh, saying when, right? So if a song said for the director of music, um, they classified it 
um, to be sang in a different place than other songs, which may have led with a different opening. And then Jonathan was um, mentioned here. He is an appointed person by David who was appointed to lead Israel in public worship. And so uh, Jonathan um, is opening his mouth and praising God, uh, um, not just because he was appointed, though, however, uh, but it says here, um, mostly his name is probably included here because after this psalm was concluded, he probably was the person who sang this song. Um, and then finally, we talked about Asaph already, who is um, um, also on the staff, uh, if you will, of the king, right? Um, and he uh, is director of all music, whereas... Um, Jedithan might be director of just voices, right? Um, um, and maybe he's just there to get the choir or, um, the praise team or whatever size it was, right? Together, um, Asaph would be the music director, just like over the whole production, right? Um, and, uh, so Psalm 77 opens up with saying, um, oh, and it's a song, I, I guess I should say this, right? Um, with a message that, um, talks about, the brokenhearted and the disheartened at first. And so in the first few verses of this song, it sounds like we're just going down, 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 right? Uh, but not um, until um, a little past um, halfway in the song do we realize um, that um, we started off with this down, 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 down. Um, and when we brood there, and when we just linger there, we're just going to continue to feel down, 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 down. So the end of this chapter is how to get yourself up, 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 up. All right, I'll start off uh, with verse one. It says, I cried out to God for help. I cried out to God to hear, um, I, to hear me. When I was in distress, I sought the Lord. At night, I stretched out untiring hands and I would not be comforted. I remembered you, God, and I groaned. I meditated, and my spirit grew faint. You kept my eyes from closing. I was too troubled to speak. I thought about the former days, the years of long ago. I remembered my songs in the night. My heart meditated, and my spirit asked, Will the Lord reject forever? Will he never show his favor again? Has his unfailing love vanished forever? Um, has his promise failed for all time? Has God forgotten to be merciful? Has he in anger withheld his compassion? And so as you can see, um, the, the author of this, Asaph, is sort of building us up to something, right? building us up to a, a climax, if you will, uh, of an ending. And so in that build up, he is uh, uh, asking us some questions, right? So he's laying out this fact that God has not answered him and he's feeling rejected. Um, and, and he's toying just a little bit um, with um, the fact that he has um, uh, uh, uh questioned, I guess would be a good word to say, God and questioned his actions. He doesn't um, put it in a disrespectful uh, tone. Uh, he just, I'm just asking y'all some questions, right? I'm just asking y'all some questions. In this song, right, it's just questions, full of questions. Uh, but he admits who God is and he admits that he remembers God and that he's had to use his remembrances of God to get him through. And in all honesty, that's what we all need to do. We all need to, when we find ourselves in dire straits and it feels like we can't touch uh, God, we can't hear him, we can't feel him. Um, 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 if, if he feels far away, even though he may be right there. He feels far away, right? Uh, but what we all need to do um, is just take a time where we go back and think about like this psalmist did um, days of old 
Think about how the last time that God delivered you. Think about the last time that you thought it was over and done with and, and nothing could be done. Think about the last time that God set you free, that God got you out. Think about the last time and that last time should put your heart on fire um, and give you even greater ability to praise and worship God. Um, and so now he's in this discourse, right, um, where um, he's talking about, right, will the Lord reject forever? Um, have, will his unfailing love vanish? All of these things, right? In verse 10, he says, then I thought, and this is this is good stuff right here. Uh, then I thought to this, I will appeal the years when the most high stretched out his right hand. I will remember the deeds of the Lord. Yes, I will remember your miracles of long ago. And then verse uh, 12, we're going to make our memory verse. So Psalm 77 and 12, Psalm 77 and 12 reads, I will consider all your works and meditate on all your mighty deeds. I'm going to read it again. I will consider all your works and meditate on all your mighty deeds. And so here is our memory verse because uh, that's what we need to do when we're going through. We find ourselves complaining. I don't know if you've ever been in that state uh, where you just feeling blah, right? You just feel like I can't, right? I can't with anything. Uh, you feeling like you can't take no more. You feeling like there is no more for you to give. Uh, maybe you feel like David uh, who says, I am poured out all day long as a drink offering. Maybe you just feel like so many people are pulling on you that you just can't even make it. This is what you need to do. You need to consider, right, uh, all the works of God. And a lot of times we don't consider all the works of God. We consider what's happening right in that moment, right? And we narrow the, our entire life's experience down to what's happening in that one moment. Um, and the danger is, is, in that is um, if you label uh, God, yourself, your situation, uh, your circumstance, everything based on one flash um, point of time, uh, uh, one little uh, flashbulb memory that you're going through at the moment, then you miss all the things that God has delivered you from before. See, the enemy is good. He is sort of a delusional, um, uh, uh, a delusion artist, right? He's one of those people that can make you see things um, um, that aren't really there. And so he's not trying to get you uh, to stop because he knows he really has no power in and of himself to get you to stop. The only thing that can stop you is you. I'm going to say it again. The only thing that can stop you is you. The only thing that can stop you is you. But what the enemy wants to do is he wants to make it seem like that what you're going through right now is never going to end. And it's just going to be always this way. And if you can get yourself out of the bubble that you're in, that is so horrendous. And just remember the good works that God has already done. Remember the last time he brought you out. Remember the last time that he delivered you. Remember the last time that he made a way. Remember the last time that he set you free. Remember the last time. And trust me, there was a last time and a last time and a last time before that. And a last time and a last time and a last time before that. God has given us so much deliverance, right? Um, that we ought to be able to think about something um, that can get us out of the bubble that the enemy is trying to make us believe that we are in uh, something that is never ending, that's going to last forever. And this memory scripture should help you do this. I will consider all your words and meditate on all your mighty deeds. I will consider everything that you've done. I'm not just going to consider this situation that I'm in right now. I'm not just going to consider what I'm going through right now, but I will consider all your works and meditate on all your mighty deeds. And that is Psalm 77 and 12. Uh, he goes on to say, your ways, God, are holy. What God is as great as our God? You are the God who performs miracles. We just learned that song, right? You are the God of miracles. You remember that? You are the God all powerful. You are the God. Oh, that was supposed to be wondrous. It's a new song, y'all. I'm still working on it. But that's the song. So long, bye-bye. Remember that? All right. 
Um, he says, um, you display your power among the people. With your mighty arm, you redeemed your people, the descendants of Jacob and Joseph. And then um, finally, if you skip down to verse 20, he says, you led your people like a flock by the hand of Moses and Aaron. And see, he's remembering. So he's going back to good things that he remembers that the Lord has done generations before him, just so that he can get out of the feeling that he is in right now. And that is what we need to do, guys. We got to, you know how we can think ourselves into uh, feeling bad? We need to learn how to think ourselves out of uh, feeling bad. And that comes with remembering God, what he has done, uh, consider his works of old and tre treasure them, knowing that the same God that delivered you then is the same God that can deliver you now. Well, that was the end of Psalm 77. Um, that was the end. We are going to continue on. Yes, I love that song, right? Um, I love that song. Jehovah, you, right? I love it. I love it. I trust in you, oh Lord. Um, but uh, we have finished for the night. We've done Psalm 75, 76, and 77. We will pick up tomorrow at Psalm 78. Until then, you be blessed and know that I love you and God loves you too. Michelle, we miss you, girl. We'll be glad when you come back. But I hope you're having a good time. In Jesus' name, you be blessed. Amen.